sweeping at me. All right, so let's go through our ear model. Tell me what number one is. Pinna. Pinna would work, external ear would work, oracle would work. Okay, so it's missing a lobule. All right, so tell me number two. External acoustic meatus. External acoustic meatus would work. Another word could be? External auditory canal. So here's one of the problems with the wording. If you call this an auditory canal, which is fair, don't call this an auditory canal because you just said the same word for two different tubes. Could you say internal? You could do internal versus external. I'll buy that. You could do acoustic meatus versus eustate. You could just just make sure on your quiz that the word here isn't found for the word here. So somehow keep them apart. So I can use pharyngo tympanic tube for seven and auditory tube for two. That way I know they're different. But the way it's written, there's like 800 names for two and seven that sound alike. But pick external, internal, or acoustic beatus, or something different. Fair enough? But the same thing, I'm going to say it's wrong. But you can put external, internal. You can put external, internal. That's perfectly legit. Okay, so sermon spans are right here. But let's do number three. What is that? Tympanic membrane. Eardrum is a legit word. I can give you eardrum. It sounds weak, but I can do it. So let's zoom in on my middle ear. Where would my middle ear be on this picture? Behind the tympanic. So basically, after your eardrum and before the bone. So in there. Ah, we have some bony things. Let's zoom in on our bony things. Close up of the middle ear. All right. So number eight. Can you tell me what bone that is? <coughs> Hammer, which is malleus, because it's the one glued to my tympanic membrane. Number one. Number nine has a beak. Number nine is incus. And then number 11, stapes. So you use a hammer on the anvil to make your stirrups. But malleus incus stapes, in that order. Fortunately, in the model, these two come off, leaving that one behind. Right? But malleus and incus and stapes. Doing okay on hammer anvil stirrup or the ossicles? Okay. You got those, you got those, you got those. So now we're going to zoom on in to that land in here. So number 12. And 18 and 15. Put them all together, what is that? Inner, inner, ear. inner ear, internal ear, bony labyrinth, another word for it. Let's zoom in now on 18 alone. If 18 is all I label, you're going to say what? Cochlea. Cochlea. 15, if I label that, would be semilocular uh, canals. And 12 is between those, that must be vestibule? the vestibule. So snail is one of them, the canal is the other one, the vestibule is the in between the two. Right. So tell me about 19. Vestibular cochlear nerve. Vestibular nerve going out of my vestibule here, my cochlea there, heading to my brain. Right. So you have outer ear, middle ear, this is my inner ear. You okay on my parts? Now we're going to zoom in on cochlea. All right, so here's where life gets a little more complex. So number 11, tell me again what 11 was. Stapes, the last obstacle. If I took the stapes off, there'd be a window, quote. That's the oval window. If you look at your model, it's an oval at the stapes. That's different than 14. That's the round window. And the way the ear works is you the fluid gets hit here, and this releases the pressure there of the fluid. Otherwise, it'd reflect. But that's oval in. This is round out. So that's where the fluid... Where does it go? It doesn't go anywhere. There's actually a shock absorber in 14 that absorbs the wave and dissipates it. So it's actually a shock absorber mechanism. All right, so let's go and do... We did that with that. Now we're going to zoom inside the cochlea. So I'm going to find my favorite model, which is here, which some nice websites already labeled. This is inside the snail. So that's the big sheet. So here's the problem. There's two ways to say every tube. I learned scala vestibuli, scala. You can say vestibular duct. So the last word, it becomes the first word, right? This is the vestibular duct or scala vestibuli, tympanic duct or, or scala tympani, scala media or cochlear duct. So there's three tubes within the snail. Yes? What website is this? Uh, I don't know. Daffy. Lone Star. Texas. I don't know. No, Daffy. I have no idea what that is. No, not Daffy. He doesn't have this one. So I don't know what this is. Oh, there, it's up there. Just Google. That's where everyone does. Yeah. Right? All right. So on your snail shell, if you took it apart, you'd have three tubes. 
this one, this one, and this one. So the trick is, the state bees hits only one of them. So which one receives the input from the state bees? <coughs> the top, the middle, or the bottom? Say top. top. Okay, so this is where the state bees is pushing on the fluid. The state bees would be out here pushing on the screen. So this is where the vibration enters the cochlea. So the round window pushes on the scala vestibuli. That's full of fluid. What fluid do we find on the scala vestibuli? Oval window. Did I say round window? So, sorry, oval window. Perilymph, because the fluid goes around my snail and comes out here. So this one and this one are peri. This is the in, this is the out. Right? So then you have fluid in the scala media. What fluid would be inside the innermost tube? Endo. Endolymph. So you have peri on the two bigger tubes, you have endolymph on the smaller tube. Okay? So you're hitting the top one, the vibration's going around the perilymph out the bottom one, and moving the fluid on the middle one. Make, make sense? Can you point to the lips? So perilymph here, okay. perilymph here, endolymph here. It's not the space, it's just the lining, right? Right, the, this is, the lymph would be inside that little triangle. Do okay in our limps? Yeah. So oval window top, round window bottom, peri, peri, and down. So now comes the membranes. They've done a good job labeling them here. So on the slide of the model, your key idea to zoom in on is this triangular hypotenuse type thing right here. If you find that, you know that's the vestibular membrane. That points toward the vestibular duct. So this duct goes to that membrane. That tells you this part is scala media or cochlear duct. So look for the triangular piece that will help you find the vestibule part. Then there's a membrane here they didn't label for you, but that little one there moves, and they, it moves like the plate tectonics do, and we call it the tectorial membrane. So this little one here is your tectorial. That pushes on these. What are those things there? Hair cells and the stereocilia. So the fluid you're hearing in your ear right now is pushing here, which pushes that, which pushes that, which pushes that, which pushes them. And that's how you're getting the hairs to move. Okay. So vestibular membrane is the triangle. Tectoral membrane is this one. There's one other one, basilar, which is the bottom of the hair cells, goes across like this. So basilar, basilar is the bottom. Okay? So you have basically three membranes and three tubes with three fluids. That's this one right here, the little finger on top of the hairs. What's the third fluid? Oh, well, the two peris, I'm counting as. There's two names, but three. So the, the tectorial is kind of incomplete, and I see it doesn't go all the it way It doesn't go all the way across. It's just a finger that bends up and down like that. So it moves up and down. <coughs> so the basilar and vestibular are anchored, and the tectorial is not. And just for your viewing pleasure, Right? So this thing here is called sometimes the organ of corti, or the spiral organ. So that, this part here, inside the cochlea, is where you're actually hearing. So the snail holds the spiral organ of cortis, as you want to know. You okay on those ones? Okay, so before we zoom on, we're going to look at the slide you're supposed to know. <coughs> so hold that thought. We're going to go to JDoc and find a slide. J-Doc does the best one here. All right, so what organ is this? You saw me click it. What is this? It's a cochlea. How do I know it's a cochlea? Yeah, and these are those tubes we just did. And you can see it's like a snail. They wrap, they basically it's like making a cinnamon roll. You take the dough and just ring it. So you're wrapping those tubes in a spiral. That's your cochlea. We can do another one here. It's a close-up of a cochlea. Again, you can see the three tubes arranged. And then the trick is, when you zoom in on that, there's the organ of cortis. That's where the hairs are. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out again and see if we can find that on the picture. So let's say I was mean, because I am. And I pointed to this space here on your test, so name that space. You would say... Scala. Scala. 
Vestibular. How'd you know it's the vestibular duct? Vestibular membrane. Because that membrane is the triangle. That membrane is your vestibular membrane that points vestibular duct. This one's the opposite of that. This one has the vestibular here because it's pointing this way. Everyone's seen that relationship? So you want to find that triangle and realize it's pointing always to the vestibular duct. That's your first clue. So if that's the vestibular duct, the big one on the opposite side would be my tympanic duct or scala tympani. The one in the middle here would be my cochlear, cochlear duct or scala media. Then you can't really see it, but then right here, this line that goes across the bottom of that would be my basilar, and there'd be a tectoral in there which you can't see. What fluid, say ye, is here? Paralimary. What fluid is here? Endolimary. What fluid is there? Paralimary. What window pushes here? Round window. Oval. What window pushes here? Round. Because it's in to out. Okay. That's the logic you want to do. So who has my giant board? The giant one. Window, Where's my favorite model? Round window is the tympani. So I did this once and it actually worked out pretty good. You take this model and slide it right like that. That's the same image. So this would give you an orientation of how they're arranging it. Will you put that up there? I can. <laughs> Vanna, give me a bell. No, I mean during the. <laughs> no. I'm not that nice. And then we can. <laughs> no. But this is showing the same three locations as that. So you want to get your bearings for this one, right? So that shows our scala, scala, scala. So now we're going to zoom in on that. So we're going to zoom the organ of cortis. So it's just pointing out, again, the vestibular is the one on the triangle, the, the hypotenuse, media, tympani, basilar membrane there, tectoral membrane is the finger. And then these represent my stereocilia that are picking up the, the signal. Make sense? So I'm making bigger. If you look carefully, your slides won't, you can actually see the hair sticking up right there. Huh. So there's the stereocilia that are getting bent by all this fluid. So that pushes this, pushes this, pushes this, pushes that. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you can identify those parts on that slide, or that model, life is good. Say yes? Yes. All right. Is it supporting cells? Yes. Um, the trick is a supporting cell is a cell that doesn't have the hair. So you'd have to find one that doesn't have a hair, and usually they're lower down. Like, I'm going to take a guess that this one is, because I can't see where it goes. Mm -hmm. But on the model, if it doesn't have a hair, it's supporting. If it has a hair, it's a hair cell. Very simplistic thing. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's our organ of cortis and hearing. So now, let's go back to our models. Now we're going to zoom into the balance end of town. So that was the cochlear hearing. We're going to focus on <clears throat> number 15 for a minute. Those are the semicircular canals. You're supposed to know which ones are which. Let's do this one specifically. Anterior. Anterior. Name this one back here. Anterior. Name this one that's flat. Lateral. Lateral. So there's one for up back and plane. So this would be a what? A right ear? No. Left ear. Which one is this? It's left ear. So this is front, this is back, this is flat. So the semicircles are pointing out the ear. They kind of. They, they're on the out, the snail's on the <coughs> medial side. How could you tell it was the left ear? Well, this picture. <laughs> what? Okay. That helps. So I can just do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at it. It has an earring. You never noticed that. <laughs> so you're supposed to know which ones are which. But now there's some things on those that you're supposed to know. So, right here, where I'm pointing, right where that tube glues on, quote, to the rest of it. There's a bump there. What do you call the bump? The ampulla. It means a cup. So each one has an ampulla where they glue back on kind of like glass, you glue it back on. What's inside the ampulla is a bunch of stuff you can't identify in a model, right? That'd be where the fluid would be, the hairs, and all that. So if you go down to the semicircular ducts on page 16, the ampulla is all you can see. You can't see the crisp ampullaris, the cupola, the hair cells. They're inside that model. 
I could ask you about them on a picture, but you can't see them on this model. They're within the ampulla. Make sense? That's where the hair lives. Same thing with the vestibule. The vestibule, you have two bumps. There's one here and one here. The bump on top is the utricle. The bump underneath is the saccule. What lives in them are the maculae, which you can't see, and that contains the ear rocks we talked about this morning. So all you can see in this model is utricle, saccule. You have to realize there's stuff inside of them. Right? Utricle is the lower? Higher. The upper one. Saccule is lower. But if I was mean enough to throw this model at you, which is not online, to my knowledge, I could still use it. Let me do that since you're recording me. So here we have the inner ear bony labyrinth, whatever you call it. So we have our three subventor canals. That would go in me like that. So that would be which one? Anterior. Anterior. This would be. Lateral. That one would be. Lateral. All right. So then we have. These big bumps here, here, and here. Ampula. Ampula. And if you were going inside of them, that would be where the crisp ampullaires, all that other stuff <clears> that <throat> you can't see would be located in there. Then these two bumps are the vestibule. So this bump would be the utricle. And this bump here would be the saccule. And that contains the maculae with the rocks, which you can't see. This model is cute because it has two holes in the bottom. This one and this one. Can anyone guess what this one is? It's the oval window, and this one here is the round, round window, because one's oval, one's round. So this one shows both holes, the other one doesn't. Right? Make sense? But you can't see the microscopic stuff on the models. The maculae is still, uh, still not clear because I thought I heard you say the earwax is in there and something else. The macula is something that we couldn't see. On right. The you can't see the macula, which should contain the autoliths. So it's not earwax, it has nothing to do with No. Okay, all right, ear parts. Let's do some slides. The last couple things you have to know, which are your tongues and what's not. You don't have to know this slide, I'm just throwing it up there to show you I'm not making this up much. There's a crisp ampullaris, this is inside the ampulla of your ear. So this is the fluid in your semi canals. And this is the thing that gets bent to tell your brain which way you're moving. So that's the thing they talk about in the video about that bending back and forth. So that's what would be inside the ampulla if you could see it. But you can't, so we ignore it. Let's go find a tongue and a nose. Your preference, which one you want to do? Okay. All right, so here's a slide that thou shalt know of a tongue. How do I know that's a tongue? It's got, the bumps. it's got bumps. Also stratified squamous. Remember that from 231? Right? So I see bumps. What are you called? These bumps, say ye. Papillas. Papilla is the fancy word for bump on your tongue, bump on your skin. So it's the papilla. The taste buds, the things that taste with the hairs, they're down the sides usually of these. They're not on the surface. They're buried down so the cheesy pizza can't fry them off, basically. <laughs> Which one is this filiform? We're going to do that next. So I'm just, that's a random tongue. Okay. Random is a random tongue. Okay, so you're supposed to, be able to look at a slide and sort of vaguely give me an idea of the shape of the taste buds, the papilla, not the buds. So what you do is you kind of eyeball it with crossed eyes. Like, well, this one's kind of tall. This is kind of vaguely tall. This is tall, tall. That looks like grass to some drunk Roman. Filiform, meaning grass-like, fuzzy. So that would be considered a filiform papillae. What? Yeah, you got to be drunk with this one. This whole slide is... Moistly, yes. Wow. So the two tall ones, especially the three tall ones, filiform, filament, filament. So you'd say they're mostly tall and straight. They're mostly filiform type. Taste, uh, taste a pillow. Yeah. So you got to drink a little bit before this. All right. <laughs> got to be a drunk Roman here. So again, this first one I showed you has a lot of filiform on it. Can you see some filiform for me? Yeah, this one's kind of tall, it's kind of tall, 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 ignore him, right? So majority of them are filiformic, they would say, grass-like, fuzzy, right? But then, let's do another one. Whoa. The guy kind of in the middle is a little different. Fungiform? Fungiform. 
because it looks like some kind of toadstool type thing to some drunk Roman once. So this one's got a bulbous top. It looks more fungus, quote. So fungiform papillae. So just one of those occurring in a group makes it fungiform. Well, that one would be. You could argue the other ones are probably filamentous, but that if I put a point on that when you say fungiform. Okay. So it's like, do you only feel like that one, that fungiform, it's like just uh, interspersed. It's not, yeah. there's not like a lot of them. The ones not around that. it were the filiform. Yeah, I'd call them filiform. That would be neat. Now this one is different. This one, you have to look at the middle and the one next to it. So this is all one thing. That's one giant papilla. It has a middle and a ring around it. So it has a valley and a circle. How do you say that? Circum valley. Circum valley. So this is the one that has like a double <laughs> circle. It has a middle, and then the same tissue continues up here and makes a ring or a valley, valate, around it. On the model of our tongue, those are the ones in the back. You can see a double circle. This one's really neat because if you look right here, what do you see there? There. Not yet. Taste those are the taste buds. Those little clear areas are where the taste gustatory hairs are. They're stuck in the side, the circumvalley papillas. So you can see them oriented along those, the valley. So the, the hair is in the valley? Yeah. And the taste buds are... Yeah. So if we zoom in on that, okay. I will do now. Let's zoom in on a taste bud. So the bumps we see on wow. our tongue that everybody thinks are their taste buds? They're not. They're the fish in the papilla. Buds. They're the bumps. Yeah, the taste buds are in them, but not soon. So this is a close-up of the side of the circumvallate. This clear onion-looking thing, or whatever you want to call it, that's a taste bud. Or, and if you look carefully right here, what is that, say ye? That's a cilia, or gustatory hair. To be formal, that's where you pick up the chemicals. And that little hole where the hair's coming out is your gustatory pore. So that's showing taste bud, whole hair. That's the chemoreceptive part, inside the papilla. What the taste pore on here? Taste pore is fine, or gustatory pore. Yeah, we're synonymous. You okay on our um, um, yes. <laughs> You know the basic bumps, and you know where to find a taste bud, you're pretty good. It's a, the gustatory here is the receptor cell? Yes. So the same thing, a supporting cell would not have a hair. A hairy cell would have the hair. So then let's zoom to our next place we have hair. There's another place you have hair for chemoreception. No. That's your nose last time I checked. <laughs> Did you look at the folate? I don't have a slide of folate. Okay. So I can't cross it up your list. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> so let's look here. Can someone tell me where I'm going to find the olfactory hairs on this slide? Very top. Very top. You're in my epithelial layer. There's air up there. Those are my cells that would have hairs, epithelial. Then I'm going to zoom in on those. Olfactory epithelium. Wow. Hey, how do I know that's going to be for my smell? What do you see up here? Cilia. Just like you're used to seeing. So, but it doesn't look like a taste bud kind of thing. So this is my olfactory epithelium. So the smell comes in, hits the hairs, turns on all the wiring to your brain. So it looks like a sheet of taste bud, basically. But the taste buds would be in the papillae, whereas this is more just a whole line of cilia. Make sense? So olfactory epithelium. Same logic, same picture, basically. So if I had that slide, you'd say olfactory epithelium, olfactory hair, cell, the whole thing. Make sense? But there's no model of that, per se. Your smartphone is out of you. Someday the smartphones will realize they don't need us and kill us off. You know what I'm saying, right? At some point. Terminator movie will come true. So you're doing okay, olfactory epithelium and all that. All right, that's pretty much all the parts that you have to do today. So use the rest of your time wisely. Or not. Where's my list? Make sure you take a picture of the giant.